Welcome. I'm Stephen Winnick of the American Folklife Center of the Library of Congress. For many years, we have presented the Homegrown Concert Series, featuring the best in folk music and dance from around the world. In the year 2020, because of the global pandemic, we shifted to producing an online video concert series in which artists record videos of themselves and submit them to us. And we called that series Homegrown at Home. So 2021 was our second year of Homegrown at Home concerts, and it's now early 2022, and we're doing interviews with the artists who performed in the Homegrown at Home 2021 series. We were very honored in our series in 2021 to have a group representing traditional Corsican polyphony, Spartimu. The group has devoted the better part of 20 years to traditional polyphonic singing as passed on in the oral traditions of Corsica, but they have also worked with artists as far flung as Croatia, Georgia, and the United States. So we are joined today by Frédéric Vesperini from Spartimou, whose American friends call him Fred. So Fred Vesperini, welcome to our interview. Thank you. <clears throat> so I guess to begin, um, just let us know how things are going uh, in Corsica in the pandemic recovery. I know you had some, some troubles early on. Are, are, things, are things getting better there? Yes, things are uh, getting slightly better, um, better and better um, each day. I think we are. Um, there is a pre presidential election soon, so uh, politics will be <clears throat> will change. Right, <laughs> will change very fast to free <laughs> everyone and to catch the mask and to and to go out and, and to eat and to drink and to sing. I think. All right. Well. Good luck. We hope uh, everyone stays well and healthy. Yes. Um, so to begin, um, before we start talking about music and polyphony, what do you think it's important for our audiences to know about Corsica in general? So to get the context. Uh, to get the, the context, you have to look for, to search for Corsica on, on, uh, on the world map, and you will see a very small island in the center of the Mediterranean Sea, and you will understand when you see our position in the in this beautiful uh, sea uh, how we have been influenced by all the uh, countries and cultures surrounding Corsica, bringing their influence. And as we are a very small island, uh, each influence grew and melted and mixed with each uh, other influences to give what we are now uh, our culture. It's a very beautiful mix of different cultures uh, all around this beautiful sea. All right. Tell us a little bit about the Corsican language, uh, which is a, a unique uh, language. Yes, Corsican language is strongly connected and similar to Italian language. When we go to Italy and we speak with Italian people, we understand uh, naturally and it's, it's very easy to understand each other. But as we are in this very small island with big mountains, um, the Latin and the Italian language brought in Corsica evolved is its own way and uh, gave this uh, specific Latin Italian style language. And of course, politically, Corsica is connected cl more closely to France than to Italy. So how, how does that affect the, the Corsican culture? Uh, if you study the Corsican history, you will see that um, uh, all uh, the, if the, uh, our history is like this, we are French since this part of our right. history. <laughs> uh, and we have been Italian more than French. Uh, from, and we have been Spanish, we have been English, we have been under many, many, many realms and countries who tried to, to conquer this uh, small island. So our deep culture is more connected to Italy than to France. We are French since now uh, 250 years. Mm -hmm. So, um, so of course, Corsica, like like any um, island, has a unique culture and unique music. And one of these features of Corsican music is a specific type of polyphony. What do you understand about the origins of this Corsican polyphony on the island? 
um, the origin of um, um, trying to find the origin of an old culture is very uh, difficult because it is an oral um, uh, transmission. So there is no written papers, no written uh, old studies about uh, Corsican music, but you can find um, a beautiful mix of influences uh, with sacred songs from um, the Roman culture, the Latin culture, and the Christian culture. So written sacred music from, from monks and monasteries uh, blended with a, a much older uh, singing tradition, more rough, uh, with not very just um, uh, harmonies, sometimes harmonies, making people listening to us make like this because we are not uh, in a very specific um, uh, chords and minor and major chords, etc., etc. So the, the blend uh, from the, those two big influences gave the Corsican polyphony. Mm -hmm. And one of the um, things that I've heard you speak about in other interviews is the importance of, uh, of shepherds in the early uh, tradition. Um, can you talk about the the sort of occupational connection between shepherds and polyphony? Yes, um, uh, the shepherd movement uh, inside Corsica uh, was the vector of the transmission and the evolution of Corsican music. Um, I, I love a beautiful phrase who say Corsica is a constellation of small villages and small villages were very far from each other and not very uh, enough enoughly connected with mm -hmm. beautiful roads and ways so they were very very isolated so the movement from the ship art um, all around Corsica uh, brought uh, some music to other village blended evolved so it's it's a it's a very important role uh, about the evolution of music in uh, in Corsica. Thank you. Um, so uh, one of the uh, names for part of the genre of of polyphony that you sing is cantu in pagella. So yes. if you could explain to us what pagella is or or what that phrase means. Uh, alors, uh, cantu in padiela mean in English to sing like a padiela. Padiela is a Corsican word. We don't have a very specific origin of this word because padiela means uh, is connected to a pair, so two. But most of the Corsican polyphony, you have three voices. So it's it's not a logical explanation. <laughs> But padiela was adopted by UNESCO as Uh, the very specific term for um, uh, most of the um, type of song you can listen in Corsica. Traditional song, three voices. Uh, the entrance is not in the same um, in the same time, in the same pitch, mm -hmm. uh, and they blend a very specific way. So uh, it gave this specific name, count to in padiel, to sing like a padiel. So explain that vocal technique a little bit of the three parts and the different timing for, for entry into the song. Uh, to understand the how is constructed a padiel, you have to put it back in its context. Um, it's, sim it's simply a way for people to sing together, even if they don't know each other at the beginning. Uh, they don't have a pitch, they don't have a piano or a guitar to take the, the pitch. So they sing in the middle common male pitch, in a G or A uh, pitch. Uh, and you have one singer beginning the song. So the man who will bring his bass know the pitch, listen to the pitch, listen to the words, listen to the lyrics, and try to put his bass Um, just below this middle voice. And then when you have the middle voice, the bass who make the harmony, you have one top voice going up and uh, closing the chord. Great. So, it, so it, you're saying it's related a little bit to practical concerns of how <clears throat> three people coming together who hadn't worked out an arrangement can uh, come together and sing 
harmonically, which is great. Um, very interesting way for this kind of tradition to evolve. So that results in a certain kind of overlap of the voices as singing uh, proceeds. Can you talk a little bit more about the the sort of structure of, of uh, one of these songs? Uh, uh, the most common Padiel uh, kind of music is always a poetry with eight and eight um, syllables, so 16 syllables. You can repeat uh, lyrics or change the lyrics. So it's this is very fixed. Uh, the range is G or A sharp um, pitch. Uh, and the, the structure of the melody is very specific to a village or the micro region surrounding the village. So if you know the Corsican repertoire, when you listen to one specific padiel, you can tell by your ear, it comes from uh, Corsica as a shape like this, from North Corsica, from South, East, West, this village, this village. So each Corsican singer may know from which village is uh, come each song only by here. So when you know all this repertoire, you can improvise. Uh, improvise, it's not the good term because you have to, to know the rules, but you can, you can sing with people you don't know. You just tell, I will sing this padiel from this village. I begin, you put your bass, a friend put the top voice and we make a beautiful harmony. Wonderful. So. Um, so, of course, this has been sung in Corsica for hundreds of years. When did people outside Corsica start to notice this beautiful tradition? It's very strange that um, uh, world most famous ethnomusicologist uh, knew first um, songs from um, center of Africa uh, and uh, places from all around the world, very deep and very far. And they, they give an interest to art Corsican polyphony uh, in the 19th century only. Uh, and when they started to study it, our repertoire, they, find, they found a very old, very old repertoire, very uh, vast, very big and very deep and very rough. So uh, they looked late but very deep mm -hmm. and um more recently you've mentioned uh unesco and they've recognized um the canto in pagdela as an important and endangered tradition they call it intangible cultural heritage in urgent need of safeguarding so how has that um helped preserve uh the the tradition uh, to have the acknowledgement that uh, our culture is in danger help people to take conscience. Um, if the message comes from outside Corsica, Corsican people will say, okay, so if all people around the world say we are in danger, we need to take uh, to take to to take care and to be more more active to promote our music. Sure. So it's it's spurred on um, pr preservation efforts at home. Um, how how do people attempt to preserve this tradition at home apart from singing? Are there uh, collecting organizations, archives, and those kinds of things to keep some of this material? Yes, there is many uh, many ways to 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 preserve a culture. You have to study it, to record it, to try to write on paper the words, the lyrics, the chords, the arrangement, etc., etc. But the most important thing we can do to save our culture is to make it live. Uh, if yeah. you have a recipe, it's okay, but you have to cook, to cook yeah. and to share <laughs> the food with people you 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 love. This, this is the best way to, to make a, a culture still alive, is to sing, to sing, to sing, to sing, and to share. Absolutely. So in your concert that you did for us, you you sang, uh, of course, Corsican songs, but you also sang some songs related to Croatia and to Georgia. So you were sort of making a, a, a relationship among different polyphonies from different places in, in Europe. Um, explain the, those connections, if you could, a little bit. 
Uh, the connection, uh, the strongest connection we have with another country far from Corsica is with the Republic of Georgia. And it is very strange. It does not come to Corsican uh, point of view because um, we, we, we had the same crush on each culture, each <laughs> other culture uh, from Corsica and from Georgia. Um, I am. I have a, re, a very good friend, um, a Georgian et, ethnomusicologist, and in his one of his book, he describes um, a USSR TV show showing a Corsican polyphony, and each Georgian people listening to this radio program said, "How people in this small island far from us sing like us." So it's very strange. Uh, uh, it's a very unique relationship between two countries very far uh, singing in the same way. And there's there's no, so far, there's no real explanation of a historical connection that people have made. It's just, um, it, it, it's still a mystery. Is that right? Uh, it's, it, it is a mystery, but you have some... You have some some uh, some ideas, um, but it's a difficult question when very far in two places you have two similar butterflies. Um, Charles Darwin can say uh, the ancestor moved into many parts of places, and the ancestor made this uh, uh, butterfly look like, or they are two very different uh, ancestors, and the the evolution made those butterflies look like, but it's a coincidence. But we deeply think it's not a coincidence because if you study old movement from um, mankind uh, all around the Mediterranean Sea and Europe, uh, we may have common ancestors with Georgian people. Sure. Well, let's talk a little bit about Pagjela music and songs and some of the themes <clears throat> that, that are sung about. I mean, one of the things that I noticed in the concert was Latin liturgical texts with Pagjela style music. How did that evolve or, or come to be part of the tradition? Um, uh, the way we sing Latin and Christian song in Corsica is very specific and it explains what I told you just before is when you bring something to Corsica and you stay and you keep it in a very, very long time, it evolves uh, in a Corsican way. And Corsican people can appropriate um, a specific repertoire of way of singing. We modify it with what is the very strong and old way of singing we have, and it gives a new kind of singing, a new kind of culture. Uh, when we sing a Christian and Latin song, we add the melismatic movement, the ornamentation we have from old people culture. Okay, so we don't sing straight like right. a monk in a monastery you can find in France or in Italy and in Spain. It's very free. It's a, uh, it becomes a free Christian uh, monk song. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting because there are liturgical song genres and forms throughout Europe that are very different from the way it's done in Corsica. So <clears throat> it's really interesting to see the adaptation that's been done um, to the Corsican tradition uh, in more general terms. So some of the other uh, song uh, sort of themes that, that I've noticed in particularly in your concert, but elsewhere also in Corsican music, one of them is exile people having to be far from Corsica. Um, explain that a little bit historically and also how that affects the singing uh, of these songs. Exile is uh, what, what people from Ireland are the, are, are the more afraid from <laughs> because yeah. uh, as an Islander and living in a very small place surrounded by the sea, uh, we are all afraid to, to go outside and to be exiled from our island. island. It's not the same feeling when you are in a big, large, flat country when you can, where you, you can move very far and come back easily. When you go uh, away from Corsica, it's difficult to come back because of the uh, landscape and the sea and everything. So we have this deep feeling. Um, 
to be afraid, to be exiled. So it's this theme is very um, often uh, present in the song we have in our uh, repertoire. Yes. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And um, and another thing that you sang about uh, quite often in your concert was Napoleon Bonaparte. Um, most people think of him as French, but of course he, he was Corsican. Um, so explain the importance of Napoleon still in Corsican culture. Uh, Napoleon Bonaparte is born in um, Ajaccio. It's uh, the, the city where, where I, I live and I work. Um, so even if what he did is uh, controversial because of it, 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 he was an, a big emperor who ruled over Europe, uh, he made beautiful things and bad things. So yeah. in Corsica, we have the same feeling toward him. Uh, from the good things, from the bad things. It's very strange feeling with Napoleon Bonaparte, but uh, we are very proud to have this little man who uh, had a, such an um, uh, extraordinary uh, destiny. Mm -hmm. So Corsican polyphony now has been a, a global music that people have been aware of. Uh, I mean, in, in on the music scene, at least now for about, I guess, 30 or 40 years, I can think of groups like Les Nouvelles Polyphonies Corse, Afiletta, Imuvrini, these groups that were important on the European traditional folk music scene. Um, talk about that sort of revival uh, movement that occurred. Uh, this musical re revival movement is connected to um, a, po um, a, pol a political movement we call uh, in the Corsican language the uh, Reacquisto. Reacquisto means the reappropriation of a culture by 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 people. Uh, in the seventies, we took conscience that uh, our culture was slightly dying uh, by the dilution in the in the French language and French culture uh, under French political influence. So the political uh, movement was. Uh, followed by the musical, the musical movement, who helped a lot to promote language, music, culture, etc. Uh, and uh, in, we made um, a Corsican group made the opening of the Winter Olim Olympic Games, mm -hmm. if I am not mistaken. <laughs> so uh, yes, it was a very important um, moment for Corsican culture to 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 spread and to be promoted. <clears throat> and it, it's interesting that you mentioned that that sort of uh, regional language and culture movement, because, of course, within the larger political scene of France, that's also occurred in other places like uh, Brittany and, uh, and Alsace to some extent and other other areas. Um, do, do, do Corsican groups um, communicate with their counterparts in Brittany and other areas of France that uh, that have had similar movements? Yes. Uh, yes, there is a strong connection with each region of France uh, who struggled to, for the survival of uh, ling language and poetry and music and culture. But the very particularity we have in Corsica is that we are on an island. So uh, it is a little bit, it is a little, a little bit more different um, the culture is maybe more more strong, and we when we have and we have to to fight more. Okay, mm -hmm. but the uh, French government is very afraid. If he gives some freedom to one region, he is the French government is afraid to give freedom to all the yeah. region who ask. Yeah. So it's it's so it's very difficult. Yeah. So they're. They're they're thinking of the of the larger picture, and it it uh, it impedes what people can do in the smaller areas and yes. in places like Corsica. Interesting. Um, so so we're so we've talked about this sort of revival movement that occurred in the seventies and after, and then let's talk about Spartimu itself. When mm -hmm. was your group founded, and how did it fit into the, that scene? Uh, we don't count, but we we can <laughs> estimate um, maybe 15 years uh, ago. Uh, 
mm-hmm. uh, a first gathering between friends who want to sing like uh, uh, shepherds, uh, just mm-hmm. sharing music, singing country padilla together. And a step after a step, we took we took um, a, a, a half um, professional way uh, because we don't live with the music concert and um, uh, promotion. We don't earn uh, money. It's not our our job, but we try to to make it uh, like professional people uh, with um, a lot of works. I think we did not miss one rehearsal in 15 years. <laughs> rehearsal are very important. Yeah. Be- because uh, can't win Padiel, you, you don't have an instrument and you only can rely on your friend next to you. So you are building uh, a kind of music with no uh, with no no instruments, only polyphony is very very difficult. Yeah, it's it's interesting because you mentioned that the that the the way the tradition evolved was to let people spontaneously come together and sing songs together. But that's not what we're hearing when we listen to groups like yours because you have worked work together so much. So it's sort of it it allows for that at the outset, but then you have to be very detailed about your work together in order to get it to work as beautifully as it does for Spartimu. So talk about that work of rehearsing. Um, what what are you working out in those in those moments? Uh, we try to we, we when when I make when we by example when we work on a new song, I try to keep the way the song um, uh, where we were born centuries ago. Uh, I don't play the whole song to my friends of Spartim. I sing the middle voice, so mm-hmm. they have my melody in mind. I tell them at this moment you make this bass and this bass and this bass, so the bass enter. And once you have my voice and the bass, I tell to the tenor of the group, you will uh, make this voice to make this harmony, a major chord, a minor chord, a fifth chord, a seventh chord, etc., etc. So we try. I try to, to let the surprise to give my friend the surprise of discovering the song, and we tried to build it from the ground. Mm-hmm. I never play as for Georgian music and Croatian music for outside Corsican music. We always build the song together. We don't learn from uh, the whole song in the in the headphone in mm-hmm. the jack. And that um, that sort of brings up another question. You you talk about the chords that you're forming, the seventh chords and everything. What is the musical training like typical in Corsica? Do people get music in school and have an understanding of harmonies or is this a specialty that you've studied? Yeah, uh, I don't, uh, I have a very strong difficulties to read and to write music as uh, all Spartimo member. We only work with our ears. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, I will say that uh, singing Corsican canto in Padilla is mostly um, um, an ear training process more than a vocal performance. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we don't learn uh, how to sing, so we sing from here. Sometimes we, we end a concert very tight because we don't have a beautiful tenor technique and the technical... Uh, uh, so it's very difficult to end a concert because we sing like it comes, like it goes, but we pay a very strong attention to chords uh, and to what your friends are doing with you and in, at the same moment. Yeah, it's a deep, deep listening as is more important in, in a way than the singing itself. You have to just be in that group. It's very, it's, it's amazing what you're able to do and uh, it's wonderful to hear it. So, um, it, so interestingly, I mean, this is one important aspect of Corsican music tradition but there must be other Corsican music as well. Um, how does the Cantu in Pagella kind of fit into a larger Corsican music scene, if, if there is one? Yes, um, uh, you can find different aspects of the Corsican music um, when you move all around Corsica. 
Corsican Canto Impadiel only the polyphonic part of the Corsican repertoire is mostly um, uh, present in the middle, in the center, in the mountain region of Corsica. Okay, when you go uh, close to the sea and to the beautiful beaches with beautiful <laughs> blue sea, uh, you are more, you have most the chance to listen to um, musical culture most close to Italy. Mm -hmm. Napolitan songs, you know, with mandolin, with guitar, with flute, with violin. So uh, it very depends uh, on where you are in Corsica. Okay. And so, um, so, so, but there, but there are movements of other kinds of folk music, and I assume there's also classical and popular music around in Corsica as well. Yes, and uh, we. I, I, I would say we love each kind of music and we like and we love to sing uh, whenever uh, in the in the car in the bathroom in the building in and, and everywhere we sing we sing we sing a lot of different variety of music and um, uh, it's like I, I would say like Georgian people we love to sing more in harmony so when you have a people close to you singing the main melody, what your instinct to tell you to make a bass or mm -hmm. a voice. Never the unison. This yeah. is this is very, very old reflex. Mm -hmm. So professionally, has uh, Spautimu been able to tour within both the French folk scene and the larger European festival scene? Yes, and we have been more often outside France than in France for concert. We have been in Australia, in Chicago, in, uh, uh, in Georgia, in Sardinia, uh, but only one or two concerts in France. We love to go, we love to make big steps. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so when, <laughs> when we travel, we travel very far <laughs> to discover a very different culture from our and and what is it like to be presenting um, traditional Corsican music, say in Australia? Who, who who are you mostly seeing at your concerts, and how do you uh, how do you teach and and learn from them? Uh, it's it's um it's a it's a very strange feeling when you sing a, a Corsican song outside from outside Corsica. You don't sing it the same way. So when we move and we go uh, to uh, another country to make a concert, we rediscover our music, our culture, and we sing it with more, more heart. And we are more involved in singing because we want to share so much. But sometimes we make surprise. We, we had um, an old Scottish song in um, Australia in a village, and the people from this village were... Uh, from Scottish migrants, yeah. so it was fantastic to see <laughs> to see Australian people singing our music and singing with us together. That's that, yeah, that's wonderful, and it must be, um, you know, n now in the days of recordings and things, people have heard at least some uh, Corsican polyphony when you get there, and they they you have little fans in Australia and wherever you go, so that must be a nice feeling as well. So tell us about, you mentioned that you've been to Chicago. So tell us about your experiences in the, in the U.S. Um, as a touring Corsican group. Uh, as we are friends with um, the big ensemble uh, Village Harmony, we were invited by, so by Paddy Kyler and um, Molly Stone from Village Harmony to perform concerts in Chicago. Uh, in Chicago, it was a, be a very beautiful moment because... Uh, this um, ensemble, Village Harmony, and Molly Stone is um, a music teacher, and she taught a Corsican song to 100 uh, young singers uh, the, from the Chicago Children's Choir, and we made a concert, and we, le we let them sing this Corsican song, I Had Tears. Mm -hmm. when, when, when you listen to to people from so far singing your culture, it's it's uh, incredible. And especially when they're kids and you know they might grow up and, you know, keep doing it and keep learning 
more about it. So have you worked with Village Harmony in other contexts as, uh, as well as the Chicago trip? Uh, yes, Village Harmony comes each two years in Corsica. Uh, they bring a, a group of 20 or 30 singers. We make a um, beautiful workshop in Corsica, in, no in northern Corsica. So I teach them Corsican songs. And um, after a few days, we make concerts with them. And people from Corsica ask us each two years, Fred, when does the American come back? We want to, to listen to the American people singing Corsican music in the small church of Bastelicaccia. You can only put 100 people in the church and it's a beautiful concert. Huh. And I know they've been important in... Um helping you also teach the tradition to uh, to Americans as well. So talk a little bit about your teaching uh, as opposed to the performing part. Uh, the teaching is, ve is very, it's, it's a very difficult process because uh, our music is not written. You don't have scores. You don't have any music sheet. So the process of, le of learning Corsican music is only by the oral transmission and uh, your, your, your audience, your students have to focus on what you say, what you sing, and they have to reproduce the voices and try to, to blend the voices together. So it's a very difficult job, but it's so grateful job because when you build this uh, a song with people you don't know in one hour or two hours and they sing like you, Corsican music, it's uh, it's wonderful. They don't read music. They have to reproduce only by hear what I tell them to do. So it's very difficult for me and for them also. Mm -hmm. And you've done that not only in the U.S., but in Australia and other places in the world as well. Do you find there's a there's any difference in the in different countries about how how people are able to assimilate this? Yes, I think that um, the youngest countries in the world, uh, especially when, when, where you don't have uh, a strong polyphonic culture, they are not used to, to work like this. So they are asking always for scores, for music sheet. But Fred, we can't sing. We don't have the partition. We don't have the music. Okay, so I will tell you. You will make what I do, and it will work. Okay, so it's it's a it's a, uh, but it's beautiful because we give them a new process to learn songs, so they can focus on other countries like Corsica, like Georgian music, and like other polyphonic tradition. Mm -hmm. It gives them a new way to learn music. So it's it's very nice. Yeah, you're giving them new tools that they didn't have before because they yes. were re too reliant on the ones that they had. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's very interesting. Um, so um, you had talked a little bit before about about politics in general. Um, mm -hmm. How how has politics affected Corsican music over the last few years? Do you think it's a it's a difficult question because um, music is connected to language to identity so so you have to uh, take a step back and to have a global vision of uh, what france uh, action uh, was toward corsican culture uh, like i said before france does not want the france territory to be cut in pieces yeah and to okay and and uh, to to and and to explode so they took a lot of decisions that are not very good from our point of view for our culture. Uh, Corsican language is not a language for France. It is, uh, uh, according to the definition in the book, it is a language. A language is an assemble of words to communicate in sure. a community. Okay, But Corsican language is not recognized by France like uh, a specific language it's yeah. just a way of talk of talking in the small island <laughs> it's yeah. not a language yeah so that's going to affect um all kinds of everything. things yeah yes. everything yeah yeah that is that's unfortunate um and uh 
so one thing that I noticed also is that, so we're talking about politics, but there's also sort of social changes and social developments all over the world. And one thing that's interesting about the Corsican polyphonic tradition is that um, until recently, it's exclusively male. That is, you know, this is a singing tradition that men traditionally did and women didn't. Um, but now I think that's changing to some extent. So talk about um, the entry of women into the into the tradition. Yes, the entry of the women in the Corsican tradition, uh, uh, it's, 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 it is logical. And when, when we make workshop, we have more women than men. It's not because we are nice guys and with black <laughs> shirts and uh, with a kind of uh, Maybe, power yeah. to attract <laughs> women, but it's not... Uh, because they want to appropriate the Corsican polyphony and they want to sing Corsican songs. Uh, now they can, because we are in this century now, they are allowed, uh, the word is not allowed, they can because they have time to. Yeah. But 200, 300 and 400 years ago, they did not have time to sing with, 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 with male. It was... Uh, singing Corsican polyphony was a role devoted to men because of the social conditions of this old time. Okay, it's not a will to separate men and and women, but um, it was different activities uh, depending of if you are man or woman. Yeah. So it was, and we talked about the the shepherd connection and that's that's one of those conditions right um yes that that shepherds were typically men and so they were together for Mostly long men. periods of yes. time yeah had yes. time to sing so so there was never a uh there it was never forbidden for women to sing these songs it just didn't happen naturally very much yes and um if if you go in a wedding or funerals in corsica in some villages you have um you have always, uh, till today, the way of placing people in the in the church, the men in, in the left, mm. the women in the right, and only uh, men are allowed to sing with the priests the uh, repertoire. Okay, so it's uh, uh, till today this separation is still um, alive. Interesting. Alive. So well. You know, it, it's good. I think that, as you say, women are entering this tradition and it's it's very logical and it sounds like it's going to be popular as well for women to sing this. So we can be happy about that. What other changes do you think might be in store for the future of Corsican music, polyphony and other types of music? I think um, we are a little bit afraid of the changes we can bring to the Corsican way of singing. Uh, each time I make a workshop, uh, each, 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 each time I teach Corsican music, I try to be as close as possible as what I heard when I was a child and from the recorded, the, re the recordings we have from the beginning of the 19th century. We tried to keep this specific way of singing and we don't want to be pop singers singing Corsican music, uh, everything to be flat, to be perfect, to be beautiful, to be, you know, with the old uh, assistance uh, of the computer you can bring to music to, to erase all uh, uh, notes outside the box, outside the range. We want to sing as uh, close as possible as the traditional singers we heard and we respect uh, it very much. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. So let's talk just a little briefly about making the video that you made for us. Um, you, you went to several different places to sing, but one of them is the place where you said you never miss a rehearsal in all these years and you go to the same church to rehearse. So talk about your relationship with that place. Uh, when... Um... When we sing in this church, um, it is not because we make the promotion of our um, our Christianity or of or, or our religion. But when we sing in a church with with Spartim, as Spartim, we are five singers. When we sing in a church, we are six, because the harmony we try to make in a church 
uh, like Sardinian singers trying to 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 um, to make beautiful harmony, beautiful chords only with the three of or four notes it's a challenge so we are strongly connected to our churches because they are the uh, the first houses built in Corsica and where all the Corsican people gather uh, make baptism wedding funeral so there is a strong connection with the churches but mostly for the sound not for the religion part mm -hmm. And um, another aspect of the film that was wonderful was the the drone footage of Corsica. Um, how did you how did you find that and and work it into the the film? Oh, uh, I I wanted I wanted people to see more Corsica than uh, Spartimo singing, and I I, um, I am so amazed by our landscape. Even when I go to work on when I go from a place to another. Sometimes I stop in my car or in my motorcycle. I look at, at mountain, the sea, the, everything surrounding me. Um, and I am so happy to live in this beautiful piece of heaven that I wanted to show you where we live. And I hope you enjoyed all, all the beautiful landscapes. Well, I have to say it was a it, it was not just a, a wonderful concert, but it was a wonderful film. And it looked like, you know, a real piece of cinema that you could go to the go to a theater and see. It was just beautifully done. So thank you thank so you. much for putting that together, Fred. And thank you for participating in this interview and in our concert series. We're just delighted to have you. So for for a last question, um, just what, do you, what what would you like to say to our audience if that we haven't touched on yet, if there's any uh, advice or anything you want to tell them about your tradition? I hope you enjoyed this movie. I hope you, you, you enjoyed what you saw, what you heard, and I hope you will come to Corsica to discover this beautiful, I say again, piece of heaven on earth. <laughs> Please come to Corsica and visit and, and uh, contact us and meet us and, and just we, come to Corsica. <laughs> we will all try to come and we will take you up on your offer. Thank you so much once again. Frédéric Vesperini from Spartimou, Corsican Polyphony. Thanks once again. Thank you very much.